doing this after about two or three months. Um, who's planning on working with the OpenStreetMap data in some way? Okay, well, you might find this stuff useful, especially if you're going to be doing some visualizations, and even if you're not, um, because a visualization is a very good way of just checking the data that you're getting out of OpenStreetMap. Um, I should probably tell you a little bit about myself. This thing's going to go through the screen. Yeah, yeah. So I'm Ian, and that's not my official job title, but I do work for Skyscan. Um, Skyscan is a travel search company based here in Edinburgh. Um, we're growing pretty big now. We've got global ambitions, um, and part of how we're going to conquer the world is to have a, a very rich sense of place. And to do that, we need a very rich set of geographical data. Um, and OpenStreetMap is one of those data sources for us. So we were doing a project to play about with the data, basically, see what we can get from it. Can we build some apps from it? Can we use it for analysis of the stuff we already know about? And so on. So um, I came to this fairly new, and if you guys are new to it as well, then you might. Uh, not fall into the same traps as I did when I was doing some of this math and stuff. So let's uh, slide. Yeah, so at Skyscanner we have something called the Geo Project, which is ongoing just now. And it is basically to improve Skyscanner's awareness of place, as I said. Um, right now, if you go to Skyscanner's website, uh, you can search for basic stuff like airports, cities, hotels, car rental offices. And that's all great for getting to places. If you know how to get to the local airport, that's easy enough. But maybe you don't know how to do that. Um, maybe it's not obvious from where you live. Um, we don't currently help you with that. Um, but apart from that, maybe you want a bit more inspiration about where you want to travel to. So maybe you want to visit a particular tourist area, like the Pyrenees Mountains or the Alps. It's not an official political region. It's not a country, but people know what you mean when you say it. Um, maybe you want to stay in a hotel near the Seine, a really big river in Paris. Maybe you're looking for a specific venue like uh, I don't know, the Corn Exchange in Edinburgh, say you're coming through from Glasgow to go to a gate and looking for a house to move by. Um, big monument, Cycle Tower, pretty famous. Um, you can't search for it in Sky Tower, maybe you don't know it exists. Um, things in your other things as well, which is quite important for uh, us when. Well, and for people who are using the site, we want to be able to tell them, okay, so you're flying to Paris, do you also want to stay in a hotel in Paris, do you want to stay in a hotel near the airport? We don't currently do that very well. We basically say, okay, now you can sell for hotels, but we don't show you, and this one's near the airport. That's something that we could do if we had a rich sense of place. But we haven't done that historically because um, when Skyscanner was young, it was all just about flights. Um, you don't actually need to know that much about geography. Um, it's basically just, you've got these airports and flights go between these airports and people already know that, like, say you want to fly to New York, it doesn't actually matter where in the world New York is, you just know that you want to go there and we know that there's an airport there, so you search for it and you're done. But if you want to, as I said, uh, rent a hotel once you get there, you need to know that this hotel is near that airport, so then it becomes um, what's known as a geospatial problem. Geospatial is kind of a techie term for all this technology. So, at Skyscanner, we started our geo project to try and make these kind of things happen. Uh, I think that's probably enough background for why we started to do that. Um, some of the goals of the project were basically to familiarise uh, my team with the OpenStreetMap data and tools for working with it. Um, the OpenStreetMap wiki was really good for pointing us towards some of those tools. We've got a list of some of them at the bottom there. Um, our, kind of, our project for just seeing if this stuff was possible was to visualise the administrative regions of the UK. So, um, Right now we're in the city of Edinburgh, East Lothian is nearby, we've got all the parts of London. All these things are in OpenStreetMap and you can pull out the shapes of them and you can draw them on a map if you use all the right tools. So we knew that it was possible, we wanted to see if it was practical. 
Um, and we wanted to assess its suitability as a base data source in general. Um, can we rely solely on OpenStreetMap? Is it good for some things? Can we mix it with other things? Um, so that was why the learning outcomes of the project as well. Um, VMware, CentOS, OSM, PGSQL, PostgreSQL, you can read all that. Maybe not if it's alphabet. So this tool, QGIS at the end, is particularly useful even if you're not into the database stuff and manipulating data at a low level because it sits in your desktop and it does a visualization. So that is the one that I'm going to be showing you um, for the remainder of the talk. Um, yeah, so let's just jump straight into some pictures then. We did all the hard work of extracting a data dump from OpenStreetMap um, with the help of a company called Geofabric, who gives you small sections of the OpenStreetMap data dump. You probably don't want to grab the whole thing at once because it's 30 gigabytes when it's compressed, and that takes several hours to download. And when you decompress it, you just fill up your hard drive. Um, it takes days to process those files, even on uh, very powerful computers. So we started small. We just wanted to use the UK, and Geofabric gave us a file that did that. So um, now let's jump into my first attempt at visualizing that stuff. But yeah. Oh no, I skipped ahead. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Here is the whole of the UK. My first attempt at doing that. It was a really stupid, naive attempt. We just pulled all the data from the UK in, processed it, turned it into polygons, and then I drew everything that was in the database in QGIS. That was as simple as we could do it, and it looked like this. That's not exactly what we expected to see. Um, that wasn't what uh, we, well, we were seeing right now. We're seeing just every little shape, the big things and the small things overlaying on each other. Yellow bits are inside sort of boundaries, so like here's a bit of whales. All this black stuff is things that are so small that they don't even fit on the screen, basically, where the administrative subdivisions are really small. So populated areas, basically, London, Manchester, if that's Glasgow and Edinburgh up there, but we don't really understand why all these white bits are up there. Um, my colleague Charlie, uh, he's not here just now, but he prepared the first import and he um, he fiddled about with it a little bit. He removed some things from it that he felt were important, like roads. Um, I think that might have been important. <laughs> You'll see by later. <laughs> this big red arrow here is pointing out at East Lothian, which is very close to us. And it's just a big white space. You know, we didn't really understand what was going on. Um, this guy here is a zoomed in version of that, basically, where that arrow was pointing is right in here. It's empty, there's lots of patches of stuff, um, but it doesn't really make sense to be honest. Um, so we were a little bit confused about that. That was our first attempt, week one, we at least got the flow of data working, but it wasn't giving us results that we expected at all. So we went away and scratched our heads for a bit, and um, well, we just tried again basically. Um, this next uh, visualization is slightly more successful. Um, this was using the same data import with similarly big white spaces showing stuff missing. But this is, admin level six is a bit of uh, OpenStreetMap jargon, by the way. Um, OpenStreetMap in the data model, different administrative regions like countries, county councils, that kind of thing, they all have a numbered level, and the further down you get, the bigger the number gets. Admin level six in the UK means um, stuff like Shropshire, Black or Newcastle upon Tyne, if you can read all of it. It was throwing up lots of repetitions of names as well that we didn't really understand as well. Um, but that was the kind of unit we wanted to work with because when people are searching on our site, that's the kind of stuff that we search for. I want to go to Newcastle or I want to go to, um, I want to, go to Buckinghamshire. I don't know. I've never searched for that myself. But <laughs> The, at that kind of level, that's how people think about traveling in the UK. Um, so that wasn't really working for us. Um, we tried again with a different data import. Uh, I'm going to have to comment on this because I put my notes in a different application. Um, we tried a little harder uh, the 
next thing we did a little background reading. We worked out that we could filter things in the application so we didn't have to visualize everything at once. Um, we tried a different import file. This time uh, we paid careful attention to what we were doing and we didn't try to remove anything. And we were working just with the Scotland file, which was smaller and quicker to process. It took us a few hours to process the UK file. It took only 15 minutes to process the Scotland file, so it was easy to work with. Uh, oh God. Uh, yeah, so our next attempt, we got oops, we got a proper shape from Eastodian and that was like, yes, it works. And it's not very much to look at now, but that was a big step for us because uh, we actually got shapes that made sense. Uh, we didn't get all that scattering stuff going on. Um, but when we went to the whole of Scotland, we got this, and this was still confusing. So yeah, we've got, um, we're about here, that's the central belt, and you've got these big blobs up there. I, look, I had to look these places up, I've never heard of them. There's islands called Rona and Scary, and they don't come out right when you visualise the layer naively. Um, and down there, Scottish borders and Dumfries and Galloway, there's kind of missing, it's like falling off the bottom. Um, and we were confused by that again. This was progress, but it was still, it, we were still really confused about it. We didn't really work out those big circles at the top, but I did notice uh, when you go to the proper OpenStreetMap and you zoom right into the north of Scotland, there's these purple boundaries around land masses, and I guess at some point marking international waters or something? Yeah, international yeah. water. Yeah. No, 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 no. Not sure why it decided the islands were that shape though. <laughs> it might be something weird about the data itself or yes. maybe we were just doing it's it all. what it is. Somebody who was, who was tagging the other side was tagging a different way. Right, okay. Uh, well, maybe later you can yeah, there's help you understand this time. There have been some questions about the way that the international waters have been tagged and that people end up putting the boundaries on them and then the maps look weird because they've got big halos around all the islands. Yeah, well there's a perfect example. If you just plot it in the same way that you plot all the other things, you get those last things. Those places would barely show up on the map if they were the correct size. Um, this thing down here, I don't think that was a problem with the OpenStreetMap itself, um, but more of an issue with Geofabrics extract for Scotland. We didn't get right into this uh, because we went back to using the full Great Britain Island extract, but um, they just we reckon they just draw a box around it and say, okay, just extract this feature set, and the box overlapped slightly on the bottom, and it just didn't pull out enough information to draw from facing Galloway and the borders. Um, I think probably what it is is uh, that I think they use polygons and the polygon probably goes right on top of the border and so some of the ways that were making up the bottom border of the thing were chopped off or considered outside the boundary and of course you need all of them to make a containable yeah. region. So, yeah, that's yeah, just yeah, there, there is, there is, yeah, there is an issue with geofabric ones with, in terms of how they cut. It sometimes chops just very. It's, it's worth if if you do come across issues with the geofabric um, extract, it's worth just emailing them. Okay. And Frederick Graham will quite happily just tweak the boundaries or adjust them if required. All right. Well, I'll send them this good shot later. Let's see. Let's see that bit. Uh, I didn't realise before I did this that when Impress is on two screens, it populates this screen with notes, except I didn't put any notes in it because I thought I wasn't going to do that. I put the notes in different applications, so I need to do that. Um, so, we tried again with the. Uh, Yeah, we tried again with the full UK file this time, which didn't have the cut-off issues. <laughs> um, uh, sorry, not UK, Great Britain. Um, there's other stuff that's missing from there. It didn't have the cut-off issues, but it did have this big bit 
<laughs> Same from the middle. That was really confusing. It's perfectly of the shape of some of the administrative regions. Uh, we were like, this was great. We, we cheered about this, and for a while we didn't really care about the Mersey side. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure we're missing. And Man Manchester's in there as well. Like that, that's Mersey side. Is that like riots or something? <laughs> <laughs> you can blow it off the map, yeah. Um, well, we figured that it's probably an issue with the underlying data. Um, so we went digging a little bit further. Um, in the, the database that stores all the information for that once it's been processed, you can search through all the tags and uh, just start looking at what are these things actually tagged at. So I think we really need about all the different schema that is in the OpenStreetMap database. It's a little bit hard to find out about these things. In fact, the reason why that happens is an undocumented tag, which uh, maybe uh, we can help clean up now that I've discovered how it affects things. Um, it turns out that England, by the way, has a very, very complicated administrative structure <laughs> compared to Scotland and Wales. Scotland and Wales are easy, like, they're just flat hierarchies. Um, they're not really a hierarchy to speak of, unless you say that Scotland contains all these bits of Scotland. But England has administrative, uh, what do they call it? Unitary authorities, they've got county councils, county councils, county councils, councils metropolitan counties, non-metropolitan <laughs> counties, um, parish, civil parishes in some places. It's all well, you, you, you think of the district councils as well, which yeah, are yeah. inside the county councils. Yeah, it is. It was all very confusing. Wikipedia's got screens and screens and screens about it, and I learned just enough to work out what was going on. Uh, which takes me on to this uh, useful image from Wikipedia, which shows us ceremonial counties in England, um, which they're now ceremonial because in 1974 England changed the way that they organised themselves, basically. But there's probably uh, the, lots of people alive uh, who were. Uh, there was people alive in 1974 who remember that this is the way that it used to be. Uh, and to be honest, people still identify with these names as much as they identify with the new names. And in most cases, the borders are exactly the same. It was just a political thing. But it does have an effect on the open street map data. We can see here, Merseyside, Greater Manchester, West Yorkshire, South Yorkshire um, are all pretty similar to that shape that was missing from the map before. Um, I didn't do an overlay, but you can see that it's pretty similar. Um, in the OpenStreetMap data, um, they, uh, they're not tagged as admin level 6, which um, was a little bit confusing, but they are tagged as boundary and ceremonial, um, which is an undocumented tag that only exists for a few of the shapes in England. Um, when you add those to your visualisation and add a little more magic in the background, you get something that looks actually a little bit like Great Britain. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, just for effect, I coloured in these guys uh, yellow, pinkish, and everything else is green. The, the outer border is the level. Two, I think that's the actual country border, which includes international waters, apparently, which is convenient because it gives you that little watery edge if you colour it blue. Um, I don't know how you would get the actual border of the country without just joining it together on the bits inside it. But coastline. You're right. So there's there's certain coastline processing tools that you can use. In fact, they are automatically generated by uh, York and Top. Um, okay. And there, there is now a website which basically generates them things on a daily basis or a weekly basis Thanks. that you can then go in and use worldwide. Okay. For our purposes, uh, for our um, prototype, it wasn't actually important to know where the coastlines were. This was good enough, but if we were going to search for seaside towns, then it might become important to know about that kind of stuff. So. But an another point is it's worth. Um, Keeping into your process updates, especially for things like the coastline, because uh, there's people fixing the coastline all over the place um, to, to, to improve the, the detail of it. And there is, has quite often 
problems where people fix the coastline and then you end up getting a coastline which is out and then you end up roads going into the water or, or vice versa. Uh, okay. And coastlines are roading in some places as well, so you're going to have to very often. <laughs> Um, that, this was uh, a big step for us because we managed to make this a reproducible process. Um, in the end, we don't actually want to display maps like this on SkyScanner's website. This is just a way for us to visualise, verify that the data that we're getting is good and it helps us remember things like these guys aren't actually tagged the way that they should be. Um, I don't know, maybe there's a good reason for tagging them that way. I'm new to all this stuff, but as a newcomer, it really didn't make sense. Uh, it might just be a mistake. It may well be worth pointing that out on the top GB mailing list and see if we that. Okay, well, I'll share that image with them as well then. Yeah. Cheers. Um, but all, all in all, though, like, even though we could do that, it was a lot of work just to get those boundaries, um, including the processing time to pull out the data from OpenStreetMap and turn it into polygons and render it. The rendering actually is very fast, but it's the processing of the polygons, it takes hours. If you wanted to do that for the whole world, it's going to take days, maybe more than a week. Um, and if you also want to visually verify all the data, it took a few weeks to do the UK and we worked out a process for it. We did a thought experiment. If we did one country per day, we would still be doing it in a year's time that isn't going to work for our project, we need results quickly. So we started to look around for other free data sources um, that would give us this with a lot less effort. It turns out there is one, uh, it's called Natural Earth, I don't know if you guys have heard of it, but um, it's compiled from various different public domain sources um, and it covers the whole world and it's updated a lot less frequently than OpenStreetMap. It's not driven by small contributions here and there from people. They, they curate data sets basically. But if all you want is country borders and administrative regions which are relatively stable, then it's actually good enough. Um, in fact, it, in some ways we see it as an advantage because we don't have to think about, oh, is this being updated? Okay, we need to process the updates. They update, they've updated their data set seven times in the past two years, so that's the kind of updates that we can deal with without thinking too much about it. Um, within a couple of hours, I managed to import their borders data set for the whole world. Uh, this is a screenshot from SQL Server Management Studio, by the way. It's a bit like QGIS in that it has built in spatial uh, results here, which is very good. Um, but you can see the whole world there with the, all the borders of the countries. It does go down to sub level, but I decided not to show that because it would get a bit crowded. Um, that data was much easier to work with, to be honest, because it's provided in the shapefile format, which is de facto standard across the industry. You can use tools like, um, oh, what's it called, the GDAL tools, or is it Google? I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the author of it insisted it's called Google, the regular Google, but no one says that. Um, yeah, you can import it into the database using that tool, and then you get that, and that was very fast. For country borders, we're going to use that basically. The administrative regions thing in OpenStreetMap was very confusing. We imagine that other areas are going to have different ways of dividing themselves up. We don't want to have to understand all that stuff just to get those shapes. Where OpenStreetMap would be very good for us is streets. Uh, street level data is some of the best free data that there is around. Um, small points of interest, uh, that's good as well. So we can definitely integrate the two data sources. Um, that's it for um, for uh, visualizations and things. Um, it's also a little clock, so I don't know if uh, someone else is up for talking now. Uh, if there's any questions.
trickier, one of the most tricky tasks in open street map. And with the boundaries, it's probably as tricky as it gets. Is this something that people have been shying away from? <laughs> um, if we focus on the detail, <laughs> yeah. it's nice to get out the yeah. and, and it just needs one person to disagree on the tagging scheme for this or that, and they change their, their regions of this and then. Yeah. And when you want to, yeah. So, yeah. Well, whichever scheme you choose, I think it should at least be consistent. Yes. Um, that was rather inconsistent and confusing. So I'll share that with whoever in the inside kind of stuff and see what you say. You should have a you should have a look at Nominatum, which is like the, the basically it powers the search box on OpenStreetMap. So if you go to the actual web page, you can do a search for a place that actually shows you the hierarchies and stuff. So you might be interested just to have a look at how that works and how that deals with different regions because yeah. that kind of has a, that does have some understanding of what the different administrative boundaries are and they relate to different parts of the world and generally seems to get it right. So that's probably somewhere to something in OpenStreetMap that's already doing some of that searching type stuff that you want here. Yeah, so you do a search for like Edinburgh and it says the name and it's got all the different translations and it says what, what the hierarchy is. Okay. Yeah. And I did differentiate them between all the different Edinburghs in the world and figure out which one to rank at the top, the one that you're most looking for. So it's, it's worth having a look at. The, the other one to possibly look at is My Society's Map It's Global. Um, Oh, right. That's updated. No, no, they've, they've gone global using the Shrub data. So, yeah, it's, 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 I think it's partly done as an API, but it's available as a means of um, basically getting admin boundary type stuff. Okay, I'll check it out later. Thanks, mate. We're having a lot of just doing that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>